Next question is from AMR1514. Was there ever a time you felt that you failed as a personal trainer or as a leader? What did you learn from it, and how did your life change? Oh, gosh. I failed as a trainer so many times, uh, especially early on, um, and especially when I would figure out that I was doing something wrong, mm. and then looking back and feeling really bad for yeah. you know, some of the stuff I did. I remember when I would first became a trainer, I was going through and reading a lot about intensity and mm. how important intensity was for training. And I remember I had this one guy that hired me, and it was this engineer um, dude, and he wanted to build muscle. And I would take all his sets to failure plus force reps because I thought, this is what triggers muscle growth, right? This is what's going to get him to to succeed. And I remember after a, a couple months, he started to get injured, and he didn't feel good, but we kept pushing. He eventually stopped working with me, and then it was only a year later that I realized that was not the right approach. The one uh, time that this that really stands out for me, I've told this story on the podcast before um, in the past, but till this day, if I ever find this lady, I'll, I'll apologize to her. She hired me to lose weight, and her husband and her hired me, and I trained them separately. And at this time, uh, as a trainer, I would have people track their food, and I would give them macro goals, and I would test their body fat every two weeks and weigh them and take their measurements every two weeks. I was one of those trainers, right? And I would do that with her, and she was reporting to me, and I would look at her meal plans and stuff. She was reporting to me that she was following my macro advice, like to the T, and she was doing everything that I was telling her. And yet, every other week, I would test her body fat and, and look at her measurements, and at first, nothing changed, nothing changed, nothing changed, and then she started gaining weight. And so I cut her calories, changed her macros, and she gained more weight, and then I cut her calories and more, and she gained more weight. And I remember thinking to myself, this is, uh, this is impossible. And then her husband, who I also trained, told me, um, maybe he shouldn't have, but he told me, he goes, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, Sally. He goes, she's not being honest on her meal plan. And so I thought to myself, okay, cool. Tomorrow when she comes in, I'm going to have one of those hardcore talks with her. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call her out and, and tell her how it is, and that's going to motivate her, or she's never going to come back, and that's, that's too bad on her or whatever. So she walked in. I sat her down and I said, you're lying to me. And she said, no, I'm not. And I said, a bunch of stuff. And I said, look, if you're gaining weight on this many calories, then we need to study you because you're the first human being ever on the face of the earth to create <laughs> tissue out of nothing. Such right? a dick. <laughs> you know, and I'm, I'm showing her the law of thermodynamics and basically showing her you're not telling the truth. And I said, look, you're either serious or you're not. If you lie to me, you lie to yourself. The whole thing, right? Blew her out. Okay. She never, she left and I thought I was so satisfied. Oh, you know, I told her now she knows that, you know, now she can't lie. She knows whatever. She never came back. And I remember at first I was pleased with myself, you know, like, yeah, you know, they, if they lie to me, they're lying to themselves and they're not serious. But about a month went by and I kind of felt bad. And then I thought to myself and I said, you know, she was at least showing up twice a week. Mm -hmm. She'd never worked out before. Maybe she was lying because I was such a hard ass about everything, and so she felt like she couldn't be honest with me, but she was still showing up. She was still showing up, and now what I've done is I've completely ruined her experience of fitness. She finally took the step to work out, finally had the courage to come in, and she experienced a shitty experience with the trainer that told her she was a liar and that she's not good enough, and now she'll probably never work out, and I remember feeling totally like a big piece of shit afterwards. So this, still to this day, I've been talking about it, I feel terrible. And I and that was probably that's the one time that stands out the most as a time that I failed because later on if I had that same client I would make them feel comfortable with telling me that they were having a tough time with eating a particular way and we would work through it and I'd make them feel supported and I would be proud of the fact that they were coming in twice a week because that was more than what they were doing before but instead I I probably ruined somebody uh, for at least a while mm -hmm. in terms of working out so you definitely did yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I had a problem with intensity too. Yeah, yeah that was like a, a big one in the beginning because you you think that um, it's relatable, like it's something that everybody really wants to like get after it, you know. And like I come from this sports background where that was definitely the you know the the, the talk of the day. It was always a mindset issue, and so I was always trying to get my clients into the mindset of wanting more and wanting more intensity and, and being able to really get after their goals. And I thought that was, if I'm not getting them in that mindset, then I'm failing. 
you know, like I'm, I'm not getting them to really want it and get after it. And, uh, I was training this lady and, uh, we were actually doing pretty well. Like she was showing up and, um, we were getting good, good, um, results. Uh, and I figured that, okay, you know, it, it's been at this level. Let's kind of turn it up a little bit, you know, turn the notch up a bit. And she came in one day and she, I, I, you know, if I was a good trainer, I would have uh, picked up on this right away. Like she's just having an off day. Like something happened outside. I don't know if it was with her uh, work or family, something like it was just off. And uh, my basic go to was, OK, well, let's push through it. You know, <laughs> and so we're like working out and she's doing all these exercises. And of course, back then, you know, asshole me would combo everything, you know. And so she was like doing a lunge, but not just a lunge, a lunge with a row, you know, yeah. or like a squat with a press and like all this. So this is all before CrossFit and all that. And I was doing it with dumbbells like in place, but it was super like intense. Like it was just one thing after the next, after the next. And then she just all, like mid workout just stops It was just busts out crying. And just starts crying and crying and crying. I'd and, love to see how you would have handled that. And I was just like, ah, and I just sat down. And I didn't know what to do. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, do you need some water? Like, what, <laughs> what do you want from me? Just you know, her like, water. Yeah. Just got her some water. And she cried and she was like, I can't, I can't do it today. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, I, I'm sorry. Like, I don't know what to, okay, let's sign out. You know, and I think she just left and then, um, and then she didn't come back. Like, it, <laughs> It just was too much, you know, <laughs> mentally, physically, all those things. She never came back. And then I saw her again years later, like in Golds when I was uh, off on my own. And Working with a good trainer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, she was just like, uh, she said, she was like, she said, that was just too much for me. And like, I just couldn't. And I'm like, I get it. Like, I, I'm sorry. Like, I apologize to her for yeah. that. But it was like one of those things where I just was totally oblivious. I just, why aren't you in the mindset like I am, you know? Oh, man. So I, I failed so much as a trainer, I can't think of a single story, right, to give you, right? Uh, I'll give you a leadership one since these guys did both trainer stories. Um, and because I just shared this, you know, I did an interview the other day and somebody asked a question that re uh, was related to this I thought was good. Um, I had this moment uh, about 25-ish where... I decided to, I had read the book One Minute Manager, which I read that and then I read another book that I can't remember the name of the other book. But the other book did all this, uh, had all this data on uh, surveys that they'd done for the Fortune 500 company CEOs and how they managed and led. And one of the things that I was taught when I got into leadership and management was, you know, you evaluate your staff. If people are not following the rules or underperforming, you coach them up, you make them better. And so that's how I looked at my team up until this point. I looked at uh, my team and, you know, this trainer is not doing as well. I need to sit him or her down and, and coach them up and make them better at what they, what they do. And thought I was doing the right thing. And then I read this book, One Minute Manager, which I think everybody, if you're in a leadership role, I think you should read this book. It's a day read. <clears throat> and it really completely flipped uh, the way I led from that point on, uh, on its head. Like it totally changed the way I, I spoke to my trainers and how I led my staff. And this was in, in every aspect going forward too. And the, the premise of the book is basically instead of looking at your staff and looking at the things that they're not doing well, is make it a point to find the things that they are do doing well and always point that out. And I thought, well, that's interesting. I said, but how do I how do I measure this? Like, how do I change this way of leading and really measure if it's effective or not? And so, and I have shared this on the podcast a long time ago, where I would take uh, my palm trio, right? Dating myself a little bit mm -hmm. here. Mm. I take my palm Your stone tablet. Yeah, yeah. I take my palm <laughs> it trio had snake out, on it. right? Andrew, you even it's know what that game. is? You know what a palm trio is? He doesn't no. even know, does no. he? So, this was before no, I grandpa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, like the first digital calendars, right? Before uh, before iPhones and stuff and I I put all my trainers names in there and then a an alarm would go off. And so, you know, Justin's name, it would pop up at two o'clock. And so what I would do Tell is me number handsome. one. Yeah. yeah. So I would, yeah, I would, <laughs> always the best. Oh, I would head over to Justin at that. I'd stop whatever it was I was doing. And I would make a point to thank him or point out something that he had done recently. It must I have been tough for Justin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't like that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Adam. <laughs> Let me get back to work. 
so I did this, and I and I did it very consistently um, for a couple months before I recognized uh, what how powerful it was. And I, I, I talk about the moment that I knew, like, holy shit, like this was like a game changer for me. Right there's that that saying that we use all the time. Uh, kid named Anthony comes walking to my office. This is like two months after I've been doing this. He walks in my office, and he just starts telling me all the things that he he hasn't done right, Adam. And he's one of my good trainers, right? I need to get caught up on my files and I'm so sorry this. I've had finals at school and he starts telling me, giving me all the excuses why he hasn't done certain things and why he'll be better. And and it, you know, opened up the opportunity for me to say, okay, well, you know, let's work on this or let me help you here and, and coach up. And like he walks out, I thought, man, that was really strange. And I'm like, why did he do that? And I realized that I had missed his, you know, walking over to him and saying what a good job he was doing for that past week. So the first, he was the first guy, uh, first staff member that I had let seven days go by without walking over and telling them what a good job they're doing. And it blew my mind that he had come to me with everything that he was doing wrong. And it was at that moment that I realized how powerful that was, because I know that when you tell somebody to, to, to correct something or you coach them up, when you, when you come at them and you tell them, you point out something they're doing wrong, you're, it's like a one in 10 chance that it actually sinks in and they adjust and they change things. Maybe you got somebody who is very self-aware and they do that. Most people get defensive, whether they act defensively or internally, they put a wall up and they don't receive any information versus when someone comes to you and says, hey, Adam, I've got a problem or, hey, I'm not doing a good job. They're actually admitting that they, they have an issue or they're not doing a good job. They're looking to be coached up or they're looking for help. That way of leading completely changed for me. And that was a mistake that I did for years leading up to that point. And when I made that switch, I never had to work nearly as hard as I worked for the first five years as a leader, and I was two to five times more successful going forward. You know, that's really smart because it's uh, it's actually human psychology. So uh, Dr. John Gottman, by the way, if, if you want really, really good uh, relationship advice for you and your spouse or your partner, um, look up the books and research by Dr. John Gottman. Um, and, you know, without going into too much depth, his research has been duplicated Many times over, proving the stuff that he originally uh, came out with. So it's 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 legit. And one thing that they say is that there's this ratio of good to negative. Uh, there's this good to negative ratio that couples that last for long periods of time, or the the winners or whatever he would call them, that they would have, and it's five to one. Right. So they thought going into the research that one to one would be good. Uh, you know, at least half the time the the comments should be positive to balance out at least the other half of the negative. But no, they found that couples that succeed were five to one. So if you're criticizing or complain or have complaints to your spouse or your partner about like, you didn't do this, you didn't do that, hey, do that, you did that wrong, what they found is that there needs to be five, it's five times as many positive things to balance out every one of those negative things, and it's just human behavior. It's so that human. so that actually is I I can't remember the book. I wish I remember the book, but that's similar to the survey that I read, right? So the survey that I read in the the previous book before Women and Manager showed that the 500 most successful CEOs of Fortune 500 companies they were they were asked a question like as far as positive affirmation with your staff on a scale of one to five, five being perfect, one being terrible, mm -hmm. what would you rank yourself as as far as that type of a, a leader and a CEO? And of course, all these great CEOs rate themselves at four or five, right? So they, mm -hmm. it came out to an average of like 4.2 or 4.5, like a really high number. They all rated themselves. They asked all the employees of those CEOs the exact same question if they're leader, and the score came out to be like 2.2. .2. So the takeaway that I got from that was that as because at that point in my career I thought I was one of these guys already. I'm a very positive person. I, I do a good job. I, I or at least I felt like I do a good job of congratulating my staff or pointing out the things they do well. I was not a negative leader whatsoever. So I but when I read that it made me go wow. Even as much as I think I do it, I am not doing it nowhere near enough to make that ratio positive for the person yep. who's receiving mm -hmm. it. So in the book, One Minute Manager, it doesn't teach to do what I did. I just, the information that I learned from that first bit of research, which is similar to what you're talking about, yeah. and then the One Minute uh, Manager strategy, that what I came up with was my own thing, right? That was my own way of kind of measuring that because I realized, wow, 
I think I already do that, but if these guys running these massive companies, this is what their staff is. What does my staff think about me? Got to be the same thing. It's your percep- It's yeah. all about the perception and human behavior. It's like a negative comment uh, weighs heavily uh, and positive comments don't weigh nearly as heavy- heavily. So you have to have kind of this offset ratio. We- we're Jessica and I were talking about some friends of ours who are – they just had a baby, so they're having you know some some challenges in the relationship. By the way, every couple I've ever known mm-hmm. who just had a baby mm-hmm. has challenges. So that's you know number one, that's totally normal. But the I guess the wife was telling the husband something he wasn't doing or whatever, and he responded. And he said, "Can you tell me something I'm doing right?" Ooh. And I'm like, "Well, that's Ooh. he he's probably he's probably feeling and it might not be true." But the negative to positive ratio feels way Skewed. off. Skewed. Yeah, yeah, so he feels mm-hmm. like all I'm doing is everything it's, wrong. It happens. Tell it, me something I'm doing right type of deal, you know? Yeah, it's an easy thing to happen. I mean, that's if you're just focused on that and you're looking for it, you're going to find it. Yeah. You know, and so it's really just about both sort of reframing their ideas around it and, and trying to focus on the positive. Well, that's the other thing that I found really powerful about leading this way was – if I did that, Anthony was the first example of when I went, aha, like, whoa, I, I'm on to something. Mm-hmm. And and then what I realized going forward is because there's time, there's definitely times where you catch something that you've got to, you've got to nip it in the bud or you got to say something immediately. I can't wait mm-hmm. for them to come to me. And, but what I found, because I did so much work into making sure that everybody on that team was getting heard from positive things from me every single week, multiple times. That when finally they did fuck up, you know, five, six, seven weeks later, they'd already heard me talk about how great they are 15 right. times. That when I dropped the hammer that one time, it wasn't like, oh man, Adam's always ragging on me. Bullshit. Mm-hmm. I've already told you all these great things that you're doing. You're not doing this. That's not great. This is not a great thing right here. So yeah. it became way more powerful when I did come over and correct or when I did come over and say that, point out something that they didn't do well. And it just had so much more weight. When I had made an effort to go out of my way to keep continuing saying good, positive things to these people. Awesome.